In this video, we're going to look at how you can draw and interpret simple state transition diagrams and state transition tables for finite state machines, with no output and with output. So a finite state machine is a model of computation. We use them in order to design computer programs and sequential logic circuits. Now don't be mistaken into thinking this is an actual real machine, it is more of an abstract model of how a machine reacts to external events. A finite state machine can be in any single one of a finite number of states at any given time. It changes from one state to another based on some kind of trigger condition or an input. And to help visualise them, we draw what are called state transition diagrams. So let's have a look now. So we're going to work through what a typical finite state diagram would look like for a finite state machine. First of all, as you might guess, there are a number of states. The finite state machine can only ever be in one state at a time, and these are represented by circles with text in, as depicted here. Typically, one of these states Will need to be a start state. This is the state in which the finite state machine begins and we represent it by an arrow that's coming in from nowhere. So in here state 1 would be our start state. You can have one or more except states. These are denoted by double circles so here state 3 and 4 are except states and we're going to see how they work in a little bit more detail in a bit. We then have transition arrows, and these join the various states together. These are represented by directional arrows, and this is what allows us to move from one state to another. Each transition arrow must have a transition condition. Here we've just labelled them as kind of X, Y and Z. This is the condition or the input, which causes us to move from one state to another following the arrow. So, very simply put, here's a finite state diagram for a safe. It can be in one of three states at any given time. It can be open, it can be closed, and it can be locked. Here we see the transitions moving from one state to another, and we see the condition that triggers us moving from one state to another. So when the state is open, the condition closed safe door triggers the transition to the state closed. The condition lock safe moves us from the state closed following the transition to the state locked and safe from the other direction. It's possible to represent any finite state machine as a state transmission table and you have to be able to uh, create one from the other and vice versa in the exam. So we can see the three states down the side here. We can see uh, the inputs that they receive and we can see what state that causes you to move to. OK, so let's have a look now at Mealy Machines. A Mealy Machine is simply a finite state machine with an output. And this is more likely the sort of thing you might see in an exam. Now the outputs are determined by both the current state and the current input. And just as with a normal finite state machine, for any given state and input there can only be one possible transition. So here the inputs are shown in red and the outputs are shown in blue. So if we start here at state 1, and of course remember this is the start state because it has the arrow coming in, the input can either be 0 or the input can be 1. If the input is 0, the output becomes 0 and we transition to state 2. If the input was 1, the output becomes 0 and we transition to state 3. This is actually the finite state machine for one of the following logic gate symbols. Pause the video for a second and work through and see if you can figure out which one it is before moving on. So this is a finite state machine for an exclusive OR gate. And if you work through it, you can see this. So if you just remind yourself how an exclusive OR gate works, um, 
if we have a naught and a naught, it produces a naught. If we have a naught and a one, it produces a one. A one and a naught produces a one, but a one and a one produces a naught. So an exclusive OR gate works by saying, as long as one of the two inputs is a one and the other is a zero, then I get a one. Otherwise, I don't. So we start here, and let's say our input is a naught. Well, at this point, we've only had one input, so we output naught. So I'm in one of these two situations here. When I get here, I can either give it a naught or I can give it a one. If I give it a naught, I've supplied naught and naught. And so I need to output a naught. And you can see, if I give it a naught, I output a naught. If I give it a one, I've received a naught and a one, a naught and a one. Therefore, I need to output a one. And indeed, I output a one. This is the last two symbols, don't forget. So the last symbol received was a one. If I therefore now receive another one, so I've got a one and a one, I should output a naught. And indeed, I've gone one and one, and it outputs a naught. Of course, if this time I output a zero, I've got a one and a zero, and I should output a one. And indeed here, I output a one. And you can follow this all the way around to see that this is the finite state machine for the exclusive OR gate.